Lockdown's back, we're all at home. So Wardlaw Workshops are back too, bringing you a new challenge every fortnight. <laughs> It's been snowing recently, which reminds me of a story from the Wardlaw Museum. Imagine you're on your way to the North Pole. No one else has ever been there before. It's freezing cold, minus 40 degrees centigrade. You need to walk 350 miles at 7 miles each day over deep snow and ice. You're nearly out of food and... What's that? Is it... a... polar bear? A polar bear! Polar bears are dangerous. What would you do? <sighs> this is what happened to Fridtjof Nansen, a Norwegian explorer. In 1893, he tried to be the first person to get to the North Pole. He didn't make it, but he did draw a picture of the polar bear that he'd met and gave it to the University of St Andrews. You'll be able to see it at the Wardlaw Museum. Recently, lots of poets wrote poems about that same polar bear picture, and you can download a free booklet of them all from our website. But this is my challenge for you this fortnight, to write your very own polar bear poem. So how can you write your poem? Will it rhyme? Some poets play a little game, where all the last words sound the same, but some don't. In some poems, all the lines are the same length, and in some poems, they're not. What will your poem be about? You could create a whole new story, like in this poem by John Miller, where the polar bear is delivered to someone's house and gives top tips for being looked after. Take him to the kitchen. Leave the fridge door open and do not light a fire. You might like to imagine what the polar bear's thinking, like in this poem by Angela Blackwood Brown. I am hunter and hunted, feared and fearful. Or you might like to imagine what Fridjof Nansen thought as the polar bear walked towards him. Was he scared and ready to run away? Proud? Brave? Excited and ready for a fight? Perhaps you could tell Nansen's story. This is what Camilla Contreras did. Looking for the horizon, I cannot see. We've been swallowed by a gaping white mouth. Or you might like to write a really serious poem with a really important message. Lots of the poems talked about climate change, polar bears dying, or ice melting. This is what A.C. Clark did with the poem ending about the melting ice. It's a very short poem, just three lines, with a strong message. The last bear shuffles down the last snowfield above unreadable signs. So there are a few ideas for you. To help you out some more, I asked some experts from the School of English at the University of St Andrews to give you their very own top tips for writing a great poem. For most poems, not all poems, but most poems, the sound is crucial. It's the sound that carries the emotional effect, the meaning. And so if it sounds like da 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 it's got a different meaning or effect to da 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 Always, always read your poems aloud so you've got an idea what they sound like. Try and include something in your poem that is special or unique to you. This can be a word or a place or a nickname, just something that is connected to you. I'll tell you something nobody knows. You can say things with poetry, you wouldn't dare say with prose. So your challenge for this week is to write your very own polar bear poem. You can send us your final poems to Museum Learning at st-andrews.ac.uk and if you do, we'll read some of them out on the next episode. In the meantime, enjoy your challenge. See you next time. Bye bye.